provoked to purpose. You would think that purpose just happened, but purpose doesn't just happen. They went years just going through routine. Provoked is not a good feeling. It is an uncomfortable, irritating feeling. It is a scary, annoying feeling. There are some irritants that should not be fixed. Transformation would occur in such a supernatural way that an illumination would occur in such a way that somebody doesn't even realize. They think that whatever they're going through is what they're going through, but they don't understand that what they're going through is, is right in online and in level with what you're about to do next in their lives. They don't even know they're extraordinary. They think they're ordinary. They think their situation is just something that they have to deal with. And they don't know that in order to change the situation, they have to be provoked. Not provoked to impress other people, not provoked to prove something to other people, but provoked to break away from complacency because it is not good for us to be too complacent. You can be complacent and not know it. You don't always have the benefit of having someone in your ear raising you, developing you, coming from a culture, an environment, a family culture or environment that lends itself to causing you to believe that there is something exceptional that God has planned for your life. And if you're not careful, most of us settle. It is easy to settle. And when we settle, we often settle into a place of complacency. Now, complacency is defined like this. It is a feeling of quiet pleasure or security, often while unaware of some potential danger or defect or the like, self-satisfaction or smug satisfaction with an existing situation or condition. Just satisfied, just dissatisfied. And in and of itself, that doesn't sound bad to be satisfied. What makes it bad is when we are satisfied with less than what God has for us. And it is easy to become satisfied with less than what God has for us because we don't always know what God has for us. And we don't always understand what it takes to really revolutionize our lives and come to a place where we really go after what God has. It is difficult now to distinguish between like peace and faith and things that we're taught in church and complacency. How, how do you determine the difference between peace, which is also a calm and a settle and a relaxation and complacency? So let's distinguish it by saying, there's a difference between trusting God after you have done all you can do, as opposed to complacency is the assumption that you can invest less effort and still maintain more responsibility. You get to the point in your mind that you don't think that you really have to give your best because you're in now. Let me break it down where you can get it good. It's the difference between the dating you and the married you. It's the difference between your first month on the job and your 10th year on the job. Complacency. Complacency begins to occur when we no longer put our full effort into becoming what God wants us to be. We are living in a world that creates two polarized ideologies. The world has two polarizing ideologies that I want to deal with. One is a deep feeling of inadequacy. On one hand, you got people who feel inadequate. This is a voice that says your best is not enough. And maybe you're not enough. They live with an inferiority complex and insecurity. Nothing they do is ever applauded within. It, it doesn't mean that it's not applauded outwardly, but, but inwardly, you never clap for you. 
You never appreciate your accomplishment. You're off to the next battle. You're off to the next thing. And when you look back at it, there's always something wrong with it. And you can always see what's wrong with it and you can never see what's right with it. You have been conditioned to see yourself from a position of inferiority. Often we seek affirmation from others. It makes you hungry for affirmation. You're starving for affirmation. See, when you clap for yourself, you don't desperately need somebody else to clap for you. This is important. It, it's ruining our relationship because we don't often marry because we, we want companionship. We, we sometimes marry because we want affirmation. So we assign to our spouse the job of clapping. And as long as they clap, we're good. But the spouse eventually gets tired of clapping into the life of someone who's leaking. If you've ever tried that, no matter how much you clap for them, they never hold on to your clapping. These are the people that keep asking you, do you love me? You asked me that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think I'm pretty? I told you Monday you're pretty. This is just Tuesday. It, it, it leaked out already. Do you think I'm smart? I, yes, I think you're smart. And then I know I feel dumb. The reason it's leaking is because you are pouring into them things that they don't agree with. I'm not just talking about so much just believing in, in oneself. I'm not even talking about believing in God. I'm talking about allowing positivity to be internalized when it is due when it is really due. I mean, when you've really done the work and you've done a good job, to take a moment, and I have to, I have to work on this in my own life, to take a moment to take in good moments. Sometimes I'm so busy going on to the next thing that I don't take time to just see law. The word see law in Psalms is a musical term that means to pause and just breathe in and just take that in and really allow that to soak into you what you've been able to accomplish. Am I talking good this morning? If, if you don't internalize it, don't assign me the job of telling you what you ought to be telling yourself. I'm not talking about pumping yourself up when it's not good. I'm not talking about lying to yourself when it's not good. I'm talking about applauding yourself when it is good. Clap for yourself. God shows us how to do this in the book of Genesis. The Bible says that God stepped out on nothing and said, let there be something and let there be light. And there was light and, and the evening and the morning was the first day. And guess what? No angels, no choir, no spouse, no friends, no person came along. Nobody started dancing. No praise team came along and said, God clapped for himself. He said, and it was good. And it was good. It doesn't have to be finished to be good. Some of you wait too late to clap. You're not gonna clap till it's finished, but you gotta clap behind every accomplishment and celebrate every step. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in the way. And every time you take a step, you need to clap for that step because at least I'm further than where I was. I may not be where I'm going, but I'm further than where I was. Am I talking to anybody this morning? And so you need to praise God for baby steps. Praise God for progress. Praise God for improvement. Celebrate within yourself and not be afraid to look yourself in the mirror and say, you did that well. You did that real well. You'll never be able to determine who you need in your life until you feel your own void. You'll choose somebody out of your pain and then when you get well, you don't want them. On the other extreme, but equally as dangerous, but the antithesis of inferiority is the assumption that what God has given to you requires nothing of you. You don't put anything into it. You just received it, you got it, you think it ought to be there. Anything you add to your life requires your attention. If you have a goldfish, you have to feed it. If you get a cute little puppy, you got to walk it. If you buy a car, you're going to need oil. If you buy a car, you're going to need gas. Anything you add to your life is going to require more of you. Stop adding more than you're willing to maintain. 
Say this word with me, no. Some of you have said yes so much because you assume that you are collecting whatnots to keep on a shelf, but in reality, you keep saying yes and not really taking care of what you already got. You keep adding more and more and more and more to your life. And then somewhere on some therapist's couch, you say, I'm overwhelmed and I'm nervous and I got anxiety. And I, I guess you do. To him whom much is given, much is required. This grandiose mentality that you have has led you to a place of utter frustration. You underestimate what greatness costs. This is a dangerous thing. You don't seek to keep up, advance your skills, study or work out. You don't seek to maintain the relationship, keep it spicy and interesting. You think I got that on lock. You do not have that on lock. You have, come on, come on, come on. You never, you never have it on lock. You don't have your husband on lock. You don't have your wife on lock. You don't have your career on lock. You don't have your child on lock. You don't have your mama on lock. You don't ever have anything on lock. That's why you gotta celebrate people while you have them. You have to love them while you got them. You gotta pour into them while they're there. You don't have it on lock. Somebody is after your job right now. Somebody's after your spouse right now. Somebody's after your house right now. Somebody's after your position right now. Never fall into complacency and think that you are so wonderful that your just being there is all that's required. No, 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 no. Complacency will not do it. You have got to put some grind in it, some sweat into it, some work into it. That's why you don't need too many it's. Because every it you take on is going to take something from you. It's going to give something to you, but it's going to take something from you. And there may not be enough of you to handle all the places you said yes to. And you've got to be able to evaluate. Am I a pint, am I a pint-sized container with a gallon-sized appetite?